Hello, I'm Tamara. I'm your courtroom companion. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been around for a while and or if you're new here, welcome. Have you ever wanted to know how to expose a narcissist in court with very minimal effort on your part? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to explain to you how to do that. I'm also going to share with you a personal story from my own journey in hopes that it will help you in your own journey to navigate either narcissism, custody, or family court. the channel where we talk about narcissism, family court, and custody. So if those topics interest you, uh, stick around. Please do read my disclaimer below in the description. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a, uh, an attorney. So please do not um, take anything I say here as professional advice. So yeah, just check, check out my disclaimer below and do hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. Uh, so you'll be notified when I upload my content as well. Uh, excuse my voice. I'm uh, recovering from COVID. I, I got COVID after escaping it for two years and somehow I managed to get it. It kind of went around my family. So I'm just recovering from that. So do excuse my voice. So let's just jump right in here. So how do you expose a narcissist in court? So let me just give you a little background information before I tell you about a couple of strategies. Some background information that may be helpful is that a narcissist, when they have to go to court, will typically find an attorney that they can easily manipulate um, or push around or kind of drive their own case. You know, narcissists think they know better than even doctors or lawyers, so they will usually land themselves with someone that they've kind of tested the water. So in general, narcissists will surround themselves with kind of yes men or yes people, yes women, um, who will basically do what they say. And those people are usually called flying monkeys, if you haven't heard that term before. But and sinking out an attorney is no different for them. They are looking for people who they can manipulate. So that's a benefit to you if you're going up against a narcissist because they're not gonna have a very strong attorney, typically. Um, this is my own kind of experience. And so the other thing is, is that a narcissist, you can guarantee, is that the narcissist will not share all of the facts or all of the history or all of the truth with their attorney. So their attorney's at a real disadvantage. Here they are, they've got this narcissist running them and they don't have the whole story. So they're really at a disadvantage when they come to court. So just kind of know that. I'm not saying 100% across the board, but it's been my experience. I've seen it played out time and time again, not just in my own case, but in other cases as well. So just kind of know that um, information. So the first kind of strategy that you can do that's very minimal work on your part is just to let your attorney know those two things that I just shared with you. Tell them, you know, how narcissists typically are. And by the way, I'm going to link above and in the cards below how to select the right attorney um, because you've got to find an attorney that is familiar with narcissism. So, uh, but I put together some uh, strategies on how to select the right attorney. So I'm going to link that above and below. I think it'll be very helpful to you. You should let your attorney know that um, the other attorney um, is likely not running the case. Maybe they are on paper, but um, the narcissist is probably behind the scenes kind of telling the attorney what to do and the attorney's probably told the narcissist that that's not a good idea or this isn't a good idea or we should do it that way but the narcissist is going to not typically listen they're going to run their own case so let your attorney know that also let your attorney know that um, the other side doesn't have all the facts you know most people i would say when they're going in to see an attorney want the attorney to know everything so that they're prepared for court even if it's bad you want to share all of the truth with your attorney so they can best prepare that's not how narcissists work narcissists believe that no one is going to be able to find them out or to discover that they're lying and so you want to let your attorney know that the other side doesn't have all the facts but the real thing that you want to say to your attorney in this strategy is to tell them to find ways to let the narcissist talk about themselves narcissists love to talk about themselves and if you're going up against a narcissist parent like the other um, side is the your child's parent um, so you're maybe in a custody battle like I was, let that other side, let the other side talk about how wonderful 
he is or she is and find ways for your attorney, help your attorney find ways to let the other party talk about themselves. And this could either be in a court hearing, a mediation, a deposition, somewhere where the narcissist is talking on the record and let them talk about how wonderful of a person they are and how you know how they feel about themselves as a parent and how wonderful they are as a parent and if you know all that to be not true it's going to be hard to listen to it but what you need to know is that that's going to benefit you later because a narcissist even though they're talking wonderfully about themselves and that they're just you know you know the best thing since sliced bread they're not going to be able to hold that up against the evidence if it's not true and so your strategy is just to kind of let your attorney know that he needs to find creative ways to let the other side talk about themselves and I'm, you can best believe that the narcissist attorney is going to find ways because he's going to demand that his attorney let him talk about himself and her or herself and, and how wonderful they are and so during you know your attorney's cross-examination he needs to he or she needs to find clever ways to still allow the narcissist to kind of trap himself in how wonderful they are so that's really important the next strategy is really minimal effort on your part as well and that's just to be a credible witness or a credible party in in the matter um, and if you're a normal person that's not going to be hard to do you just go in and you tell the truth you're not trying to play any games you're not trying to perjure yourself you're just trying to just be a normal person and so the reason why that's super important obviously in a court of law you don't want to lie but, and be credible but what's more important about being credible when you're going about up against a narcissist is the judge is going to be in there assessing the credibility of both parties all the time and there'll be a stark difference between you being credible and the narcissist not being credible and you want to kind of really shine in that area don't give the court any reason to doubt your credibility because when they see those differences the court is going to be able to know that the narcissist is the problem if you're kind of lacking in credibility they're not going to know which party to believe so you need to up your game in, in terms of your credibility come in there dressed come in there speaking you know proper the proper way you're not trying to uh, downgrade the other parent you're just trying to be normal so that's really important and one other bit of advice although this isn't really a strategy but i guess you could consider it a strategy and that is that you don't want to come in there and talk about you know using the word narcissist against the other parent or to talk about any other psychological diagnosis you're not a therapist and the judge isn't really going to want to hear that from you your best bet is to talk about the behavior so once the narcissist talks all about themselves and how wonderful they are your attorney should find ways to allow you to speak about the actual facts if it's not true if that other parent is not all that he says or she says that they are you'll want to show the facts and the behaviors don't speak about what you think is wrong with the other person because that's not a fact the judge isn't going to want to hear it they're going to base the hearing on facts and evidence not on opinions or what you you know basically what you think is wrong with the other person so that's just a bit of advice okay and so once the narcissist talks all about themselves and then your attorney brings you on the stand and you start talking about the facts of the stories and you can back it up with emails or text messages or you know whatever other evidence that you have that's when the narcissist is going to come in glued because up to this point he's probably thought or she's probably thought that they've got your attorney um, under their wing as well right because all along no one has called them out yet but when you start giving evidence and you start to show the facts the narcissist is going to truly expose himself or herself because up to that point they haven't heard the truth be said and so and it's not just you saying the truth it's you showing the truth that's when you can really expose the narcissist because he's trapped himself he's talked about oh par parenting is so important to me i go to all the games i you know i help him with his homework you know i go to all the doctor appointments and then you can show emails where you've texted and said you know you were supposed to have Johnny at the doctor appointment they called me and they said you didn't show up you know it's those kinds of things that will expose the narcissist for who they truly are and it really does show 
the judge that you're credible and they are not. So that's my best advice is just to you know, inform your attorney about the fact that the other party is a narcissist, inform your attorney that they need to find creative ways to let the narcissist talk about themselves. You need to be credible, up your game in terms of your credibility, whatever it is. If you've done something that you're not proud of and it comes out, it's okay because you're owning it. Take responsibility for it. That's how you own your credibility is, you know, let's say that you missed, you know, two or three doctor appointments because, you know, you, you put work in front of it, you know, say, you know, if I could go back and make a different decision, I would, you know, up your game in terms of credibility, whatever you can do to up your credibility, that's really going to help show and expose the narcissist for who they are. And then just let the facts unfold and then watch the narcissist come unglued. That's how you expose them with irrefutable facts. Now I'm going to tell you a little story that kind of highlights um, what I've been sharing here today and that is we had a court hearing for um, spring break. I started to get emails from my ex, this was years ago, and I started to get emails that he thought he had the spring break with our son and I thought I did and I was going by our holiday order, our holiday custody order, and he was going from a prior holiday custody order and he started to manipulate and I saw it coming. So I notified my attorney and so my attorney tried to work with his attorney and it just wasn't going anywhere so we had to call, we had to ask for a hearing. And when we had a hearing, I watched something very clever kind of unfold on the stand and and the judge began to question my ex on the stand and she said, so I hear you're going to take your son to um, Hershey Park for spring break. And he was like, oh yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, okay. And she says, you know, so when, w when are you leaving? And so he was just, he just kind of fell right into it. He thought the judge was on his side and she was like, oh, so you're leaving on this day. And when are you coming back and what kinds of things are you going to do? And, you know, he just was eating it up thinking, oh, I'm just, you know, this is smooth sailing. So then she said, so when did the other party inform you that they didn't think that you were supposed to have your son on spring break? When did she notify you of this? And he, and all of a sudden he was like, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know when. And he, she goes, well, I do. And it was in January of that year. And this hearing was in um, April. Oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention. She asked him, when did you make these plans to take him to uh, Hershey Park? And he said, oh, in March. And she said, oh, and did you let your son know that you were going? And he said, yeah. And he, she, he said, the judge said, and was, was he excited? She, he said, oh, yeah, he was really excited. He can't wait. And then, then she hits him with, and so when did the other party tell you that they didn't, she didn't think that you were supposed to have him for spring break? And he says, oh, I, you know, I don't know. And so she said, well, I do, because I have an email here from January. So she was explaining to you why she thought you didn't have him on spring break. So at best, you knew that it was contested. And yet, you told your son in March that you were taking him to, to Hershey Park for spring break. And that's not going to happen. You're not supposed to have him for spring break. She's supposed to have him for spring break. And so that kind of shows you that, you know, you can lead the narcissist right where you want them because they can't read the room. They're not able to really see what's going on. All they see is that they're smarter than everybody in the room. And when that was unfolding, I actually thought the judge was on his side too, because she was so good at like, almost trapping him in a way. And then she hits him with, well, you knew that it was contested. And so that's just kind of one example of how you can let the narcissist basically hang themselves, you know, in their own stuff. So she was able to show and expose this narcissist that he wasn't supposed to have him for spring break. And he told his son he was going, almost as if it was a done deal, even though he knew a court re hearing was going to be coming up. Like he still told him that he was going to take him to spring break and that, you know, didn't happen. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you. If you haven't yet checked out my video on how to beat a narcissist in court, I'll link that in the cards above in the description below. Hopefully that'll be helpful to you as in, in your journey against a narcissist in court. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.